terrorism in Germany. Um, I'd uh, like to start with a short look at the situation in 2021 as I see it. Um, the security situation in the country has improved um, after the terrible year of 2016 when Germany experienced uh, five terrorist attacks um, altogether. One of them uh, in Berlin in December 2000, uh, 2016, a major one. Um, and although the situation seems to be relatively, seems to have been relatively quiet ever since 2017, there has been a series of foiled attacks ever since, uh, and some of them quite serious. Um, I would like to mention one example that was the so-called Ricin plot in Cologne in 2017, um, when, uh, when a couple um, is, is, has planned uh, to use ricin in an unknown location to kill um, a number of Germans. Plus, uh, Sophia has already mentioned it, an alleged plot by a group of Tajiks who are reported by the German authorities to have been in contact with IS Central in Syria um, until early 2019 and with IS uh, Khorasan at, uh, at the same time. Plus, we have seen quite a few smaller incidents, and at least one of these plots has been directed by IS. You might have heard about it. Uh, there, have, uh, there has been an uh, arrest in the West German town of Hagen. Quite recently, a 16-year-old boy was alleged to have planned, is alleged to have planned an attack uh, on a Jewish uh, installation in, uh, in the city, and he was in contact with an IS coach. And that is my second point. If, uh, if you analyze the different plots in Germany in recent years, most serious plots in Germany have been directed um, by IS, meaning that there was an attacker, uh, either a, a lone actor or a small group of people, who have been in contact with IS handlers, who have coached them, who have advised them, sometimes over uh, longer periods of time. Um, the attack in Berlin in December 2016 by Anis Amri was one of these directed attacks. The rising plot in Cologne was one of uh, these attacks. And as it seems, the plot, if it has been a plot by the Tajiks in North Rhine-Westphalia in early 2019, has also been um, a directed plot. Plus, there is ample evidence that some kind of coaching by an IS cell uh, might have played a role in the Vienna attack here in Vienna uh, on November 2, uh, 2020. And this, I think, is, most pro is probably the most dangerous modus operandi that Western governments have to prepare for because lone actor attacks have, a, have happened, but they have not had too much effect. Sometimes these guys kill people, but in most cases, the effect is uh, quite nil, uh, is, uh, is not so serious. And um, I think um, what, well, what you need for such, an, uh, such a directed attack or for a major wave of directed attacks is first mass radicalization of young supporters. And we have seen that in recent years that the organization Islamic State has attracted much more young, young people in the Western world and in the Muslim world um, as well than any other jihadist organization before it. I personally believe that the root cause uh, for this, this success is ideology and not discrimination or some other factor uh, in the Western world. But that's uh, perhaps up to discussion. And, what, and there is another thing that you need in order to successfully launch these directed attacks that is a strong, successful organization in the, in the Muslim world. And that is perhaps the reason why we have not seen any directed attacks by Al-Qaeda or uh, by organizations close to Al-Qaeda, but rather directed attacks seem to be uh, a monopoly of the Islamic State. The question is uh, now, do we see uh, a trend in recent years and, uh, and in months? I think um, that 
everything everything that I've been watching here in Germany and in uh, and in other countries seem to hint at quite a stable threat that is not not changing for the time being. What is what is important about the events in uh, Afghanistan, though, is the potential for new organizations or the potential for organizations that already exist to grow, simply because the supporters for terrorist attacks are there. They are there all over the Western world, and they are there um, in the Arab world as well. But a big organization is needed that is able to prompt young people to kill and to die for it. IS, of course, is still out there. I have heard of uh, external operations structures in Western Syria that might have played a role in the Vienna attack. I have heard of external operations um, structures in Turkey and in the Balkans as well. So the biggest danger that I, or the, the two dangers that I see after the withdrawal from Afghanistan are the following. The danger one, danger one is the emergence of a new IS structure, IS Khorasan, that manages to control, control territory, possibly attract foreign fighters, but then prompt followers worldwide uh, to let them sell, uh, to, to let the organization direct attacks. The second danger that I see is uh, our alliances between IS, Al-Qaeda, and other structures. I have heard that Ambassador Edmund have mentioned, has mentioned the, uh, the Haqqani network, but there are also other Afghani or Pakistani uh, global jihadist outfits who might be ready to, uh, to join new organ organi organizations. Um, and I think you have, I think Hans has already mentioned that um, while we were speaking, there is the possibility in Afghanistan uh, if, especially if the Taliban do what the Western world wants them to do, namely promote a moderate course that will pave the way for the global jihadists of IS, Al-Qaeda, Haqqani and other Taliban to create something new, a new um, alliance of uh, jihadist organiza organizations. That is why Afghanistan is important. I still think though, and that's possibility number two, that Syria remains um, Im important. And especially because I see a certain potential for new alliances between IS and Al-Qaeda structures. After the territorial cal caliphate was defeated in early 2019, and sometimes even before, all kinds of contacts have been made between IS leaders, IS members, and their jihadist colleagues in Idlib. Just think of the presence of Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi uh, in Idlib on the Horas ad-Din territory in 2000, uh, 2019. For Germans, I think Afghanistan is attractive, um, but hard to reach. We had a small cell several years ago from the Frankfurt area, three young people who tried to reach Afghanistan, um, and at least one of them died on the way. It seems to be seems to have become extremely hard to cross Turkish and Iranian territory direction Pakistan or Afghanistan. That is why I think that directed attacks might become a more common phenomenon if the jihadists over there in Afghanistan grow stronger. It is more attractive for young jihadists to act on behalf of jihadist organizations in Afghanistan than to go there. And for the time being, I still believe that Syria remains the more concrete danger, though, and not so much because of the organizations who are active there, and not so much because I think that there is a possibility for jihadist cooperation between IS and Al-Qaeda groups, but simply because of the fact that so many Germans are still out there. I'm not talking about the 30 Germans who are in Kurdish jails, but we do count at least 40 Germans right now in the ranks of either Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, the Syrian Liberation Committee, or affiliated organizations like uh, Horraz ad-Din or even smaller outfits. Although 
these groups, of course, have not uh, perpetrated any attacks abroad, but simply because there are so many Germans, there is a certain possibility that they might become active in the near future. Thank you very much.